Good morning, everyone. Thank you for fighting uh, traffic this morning. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, before we get started, um, how many of you are familiar with Open Gateway APIs, Camera APIs? Ah, that's a good one. Um, so this morning, we, after two exciting days at API Days, this morning we have a full track on Telco APIs. How do we make our networks programmable? And at the same time, how can we help developers to make mobile network, uh, how, uh, how to make mobile applications that are network aware? Uh, it has been a, a journey from the telco side, uh, and today, together with other peers from the industry, we are here to uh, share with you how we have been working together on this, how we want to make this a reality, and what are the different benefits we see. So, I'm going to start this morning on behalf of Orange, but there are um, several interesting sessions this morning that I encourage you to follow to get to have the full picture of what's happening. Uh, in order to start this, I'm going to uh, introduce what happened about two years ago. Um, as you know, APIs for Telco is not a new topic. Uh, we have introduced cloud-native technologies, virtualized our infrastructure for a while now. What happens at this moment and what has been happening over the past um, one year and a half is that we are at a moment in which our networks are fully transforming. We have the 5G SA arriving commercial in uh, some of the key markets. We have uh, more IT cloud than ever. We have data and AI. We have LLM and ChatGPT coming over. And at the same time, so the way we provide connectivity towards uh, the users, be it B2B or B2C, is deeply changing. Everyone expects a, a ultra personalizable or a flawless connectivity every time. And you all remember the COVID time, the time when you don't have the right connectivity. It's really, really annoying. So what we want to bring with this initiative is to give the keys towards the communities of developers to be able to build new use cases that leverage the ultra low latency, the reliability, the openness of the network. So this story started with Camara, with the Telco Global API Alliance at the Linux Foundation, which has now more than 200 contributors um, from all around the ecosystem, from telco, from industry, software players. It also involves GSMA that uh, initiated in 2022 the Open Gateway Initiative uh, that has now operators supporting from all around the globe. Um, in addition, uh, partners from the ecosystem, be it on the aggregator space and the marketplace space, have been engaged and committed to help us in opening the networks and bringing this innovation to the market. Today we have a range of APIs that starts with uh, KYC, customer identification, uh, connectivity, um, IoT, device management, billing. This is just the beginning. This photo is a live photo. This is changing and you can change it. You can contribute and say, look guys, these definitions are not quite good. This is what we would like to do or this is how we imagine to use it. So what we want today is to steer this conversation and see what's interesting for you. What would you need to use this and how can us telco make this more easy to access um, and widely available? So at Orange, um, we have been starting through uh, different angles to support this. Through, of course, standardization. Um, in, uh, in, um, in France, especially, uh, we have the Orange Developer uh, Platform that is uh, the team supporting us today and doing uh, beta programs in opening the new APIs. We have the contributions at the Camera Open Source uh, and of course the GSMA, as well as we work with the TMF Forum and other organizations. We have representatives here today from uh, IF2M, so we thank them for joining. And we have been starting this journey on core, uh, on key markets in Europe. We want to make it widely available. Why? Because if we all consider what's happening with one-time password, messaging, uh, enhanced voice, enhanced video, Sometimes on the telco side, things are a bit fragmented or a bit too customized, and we want to make easier this access and with the abstractization layer uh, that we can provide from, from the telco side. 
So coming on, who is supporting these initiatives? We mentioned that there is a large number of operators. There are more than 30 operators that have been on board from the GSMA from all around the world. Australia, Latin America, Europe, uh, North America, Asia. So it's really a global movement. And that is really key. This is what is changing. This joint effort to make this happen as of uh, uh, H1 2024 with go-to-markets on uh, some um, on a significant number of countries uh, ahead of us. So this is what is changing, of course, as well. It is a live picture and we'll have a representative from GSMA telling us more about this journey today on how it was developed. So how can we use it? What are the precise APIs that are involved? So we can talk about connectivity, network slicing, uh, be it from the perspective of 5GSA arrival, but also in terms of how we can optimize, be it on the Wi-Fi quality, how do we make a smooth user journey? Whenever you to come here this morning, you went from your home Wi-Fi to the underground uh, 4G, 5G, and now here. Uh, so how can we make a seamless user journey in which connectivity you have the right connectivity each time for the type of usage uh, you have at the moment. Um, identity location and customer information. So we strongly believe that uh, the telco world has assets that are very valuable. Um, according, respecting the GDPRs and private data privacy rules, of course, but we can be a trust, trusted partner to confirm somebody's address, um, somebody's location, and that's why we want to partner with uh, B2B uh, and uh, partners that are willing to um, enhance this proposal, be it sometimes for uh, checking that you are not a bot when you are making a reservation on a media platform or, on a, or you are not uh, faking uh, an order to a large e-commerce. We also talk about edge capabilities. So the promise of edge, um, will start being more and more concrete with the arrival of 5GSA and more cloudified networks. Um, and as well, with a, um, it will help us, having these APIs will help you actually, to be able to leverage more the compute capacity of the telco operator, the capacity that we have um, at a more capillary level in our networks that today is there. We can use it for enhanced privacy use cases, for instance, when you have uh, when you want to keep data processing more local, more closer, uh, to, more closer to, to the place where your, your, uh, your application is uh, working and to uh, better manage workload orchestration. Uh, carrier billing, um, it is not a new feature from us, but we want to make it more accessible and to make it more easier to, to access it. Um, we talked about device management. Um, 5G comes with the promise of massive IoT. We have lots of uh, for, uh, IoT also on other kind of uh, connectivity. So how can we leverage more this knowledge? How can we enhance it? And uh, for instance, we have been looking recently into 5G new calling. How can we provide an enriched experience uh, based on the data channel in 5G? There have been experiences in Asia on that and we'd like to take that promise further to see if um, communication services can be improved and more largely available thanks to that. <coughs> Among, uh, sometimes we may look at verticals, so financial sector, media, social customer engagement, e-commerce, retail, gaming. So maybe one of the questions is how do we start? How do we, how do we uh, leverage this momentum? So today at Orange, um, on some of the key markets and also via Orange developers in the lab environment, you have access to um, beta versions and as well as uh, soon to come some production versions, namely around SIM swap, number verification, device location. Um, and we have a backlog of these APIs that you can also contribute to either directly by reaching out to Orange, but also through the camera uh, community uh, via, via the open contributions. The backlog of Camara is public, so whenever you feel that uh, the definition can be a bit adjusted or you'd like to have a technical conversation, um, you'll find support from the community to do that. What we want to do is to make this an open proposal, accessible to everyone, 
that improves and improves over time. Um, we'll talk about uh, maybe for the ones that are based in France, you, you have noticed that there was regulation this summer of age verification. Let's imagine that that regulation, as often happens, becomes European. So how should the application providers act in that case? Have a one-to-one -one integration or try to have a one-shot integration uh, for that type of requirement. So this is the kind of use case we try to facilitate. Um, and also on identity, I think some of the use cases we are tackling most, and I think that are very interesting for as an application, are um, around fake identity and detecting um, identity theft. Um, be it on X, on uh, Meta, on LinkedIn, and other kind of platforms sometimes, and you've ha we have all seen it with fake news arising, with bots campaigns. Being able to say it's a really verified account can be something that is valuable for the community overall and for, for the users. So at Orange, um, we, uh, through Orange Developer, we have been launching a developer challenge in September and October to try to see and experiment with the first available APIs, so around SIM swap, uh, quality on demand in the beta version, device location, device status. Um, we had lots of demands. We decided to move forward with six companies, and we wanted to code today three of them, Colony Networks, Initia, and Convergence. Um, they have reached through, they have been permanently working with our teams and ended up with, not, with interesting use cases that they, are interest, that they look forward to, to take in production. Colony Networks on device management and fixed wireless access, Ignitia on smart agriculture and IoT, Convergence on mobile payment security. Um, this is to say that this environment is um, is there, it's available, so if you want to experiment with it, if you want us to look into some of our, your proposals, if you have questions, you can very easily access the sandbox via Orange Developer. Um, we intend to expand this roadmap um, and to have more support. So it's very easy to, to create an account, to subscribe to an API, to create an application. And really our ambition is to make this easy for you and be able to co-innovate together. Um, so um, our first talk here to, uh, today, the purpose of this talk, is to encourage you to experiment with this. We are open for feedback. There will be more to come. We'll work with uh, the API Days organizers even more to try to see how we can steer this together, because it's not an orange topic, it's not a one single player topic, it's how can we use this opportunity to be able to offer um, connectivity in a different way, and how can we leverage trusted assets in the proper data framework um, to be able to enable new use cases or more efficient than today. So um, before we go into questions, I'll let you the opportunity for the ones we, that want to um, take a look at the website to, to join this. Um, and um, with also maybe in this exchange session, knowing a bit more of what interests you and also how, if you are interested to work with us, how would you like to take this on uh, further? The second or the third slide, you, you talk about marketplaces and aggregation. What is the difference we make between the two of them? Um, I'm coming for this one. This one? Okay, so marketplaces and aggregators. Uh, we distinguish the two, but there are maybe hybrid models between the two. So on aggregators, we think of uh, players uh, that we traditionally work with today on the wholesale side, on voice and messaging. So they are taking termination from us. We are offering them connectivity and termination on some destinations. They put it in a package, they enhance it, and they sell it to the end customer. In this scenario, the telco is the one providing the feature, but we don't know how it's used, who is using it, why. That's, that's, that's abstract for us. And it's that player's uh, responsibility 
to, to enhance the usage. In the different, in the marketplaces area, that means that we are putting the offer on the marketplace and the, uh, we are the entity that is responsible on how it would be used, how it's going to be consumed, um, and we'll be in touch with the end customer. That is the difference in the, in the way we address the end customer. We all understand the need to make these APIs more readily available, but some of them involve quite sensitive information or the possibility of, of fraud. If you take the example of carrier bidding with any type of payment, there's a risk of fraud. How do you think that the, the industry needs to balance the, the need to make these APIs available uh, really and easily, maybe with your online subscription, and yet won't, you know, how will we will, will stop it being a huge increase in, in fraud or the abusive use of personal information because some of these APIs involve quite sensitive information concerning telco customers? Thank you for that question. So we are facing an increased, actually, <laughs> an, in an increased uh, case numbers of frauds on, on our networks and digital assets that you have been seeing, the phishing uh, campaigns and have been really become uh, a problem and stolen identities. So as a trusted operator, we are very cautious on data privacy. Um, uh, that is why now in the, you know, or in, in opening the, I would say, um, the first APIs, uh, we are also looking into uh, security APIs. So opening our networks doesn't mean opening them to vulnerabilities, but at the same at the same time, it means that the end user experience is changing a bit. So we are very careful about consent, uh, how the, the user consent is gathered in these situations, what kind of data we are sharing. Um, so, as we are in the first initial phases on how we can enhance this, we are careful, very careful about setting the right foundation for this. Um, I would say that um, currently there has been, and that's why Orange itself invested a lot in the cybersecurity area. It's, it's uh, something, it's a, cybersecurity is an area that is very uh, treated seriously at Orange side and in which this, uh, these APIs and others to come may be actually in use to empower that uh, cybersecurity. Um, today, yeah, we were looking up, um, today we may find user information on the internet we shouldn't be able to find. And uh, that is very easy to do. It's now you are not, you are not necessarily a hacker or an advanced user. Sometimes you just, you see out there a lot of information, a lot of personal information from a person. So we want to make this a safer environment. Um, and that is why I think that this initiative, which is multi-telco, ecosystem great, can help support actions that are scalable. So not only, uh, we talked today a lot about uh, European, um, European policies, but as we have seen, some of them had had a strong echo and uh, pushed some players to, be to improve their flows worldwide so it's it's important and especially nowadays uh, in the in the context we are to uh, make sure that non-sensitive data uh, so sensitive data is preserved and non-sensitive data can be used to enhance the experience it's okay I'll, I will chop a little bit yeah well one question here Hello. Is there an initiative between the operators to um, to select uh, um, an API management platform? A common. So current talks have been on how to make this work uh, end to end. I have quoted TMF forum. There is also uh, MEF we can work with. Um, we are not. We are working in the standardization bodies on how to facilitate some of the exposure in terms of uh, telco finder. How do we know to route an API uh, efficiently from one operator to another? Um, what should be the entry points? Um, on on the architecture side, it's more TMF forum that has been working with us on the operator on what we call operate APIs. Um, so how can uh, we improve and automate ordering of these APIs? 
Um, at the same time, each player is responsible on how to implement this. There is flexibility. What we want to make sure is that the interfaces, be it towards the developer world, be it towards the IT providers or internal infrastructure. Um, so I didn't mention it here, but also the role of traditional network vendors is instrumental in make, making this happen because at the operator level, it also comes from the level underneath um, this openness. So the way we work together is important, the interfaces. At the same time, standardization is proposing architectures, but each player is responsible on how to manage it uh, on, its, on its business implementation. So I have a complete other question. So if you're taking a look at the current sales people and sales channels in, in telcos, so do you see a chance to train them to sell APIs instead of SIM cards? Or is it more like that you see that the telco industry needs to, to, to really improve with new forks and hire people there? That is, uh, that is a really good question because the way we work is changing, right? Uh, and we are pushed to learn on the telco side every day. We are pushed to learn on virtualization. We are pushed to learn on automation, on cloud, on AI, on generative AI more recently. Uh, so I would say that on the technical side, the core network IT skills have been through the past years evolving, evolving, evolving to be able to cope with these new generations uh, and with this permanent evolution. Of course, this opening changes the way as well as we think about product, about network as a service. How do we commercialize this? How do we put this in motion? What is it required? How to train the sales uh, uh, people? Um, I think there's a lot of good willingness because we see this as a uh, future-proof opportunity. We, we feel that it's, we have the conviction that we it's the right thing to do. So together we are trying to, uh, through the tech expertise, we are trying to reach out to the product uh, to be able to enhance the culture on this. But at the same time, and that is very interesting, for this to work, we, uh, we need to put in motion use cases that are valuable. So my personal conviction is that the first thing is to make sure that we are, on, we are trying to solve the right problem in the right way and involve as soon as possible the customers and the partners uh, in that reflection. In terms of pure sales, I would say also that partnering and training are part of this transformation. Thank you very much, Otilia. And we reached the time, so we can have uh, some applause for Otilia. Thank you.